Joining me now is Dr. Judy Stone. She is an infectious disease specialist, an author, and a contributor with Forbes, and wrote two articles on this very scary situation. Hello, Dr. Stone. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. And so glad to have you back. Um, I loved your articles. Always so well done. However, the content is very, very serious. Uh, so before we start discussing this problem, um, because it is technical a little bit, and I want to clear up some of the, the vocabulary here, I was wondering if you'd be kind enough to define some of the scientific terms in the best possible lay language for my radio audience. And uh, can we start out with what is an ESBL bacterium? Sure. It's important, I think, to start with that because there's uh, that leads up to why this MCR bug is so is so scary. ESBL stands for extended spectrum beta lactamase. And beta-lactamases are enzymes that are produced by many types of bacteria, and they um, make the uh, bacteria resistant to many common antibiotics and make the infections harder to treat. So there's sort of a hierarchy of resistant to antibiotics. And first, we, we try to start out uh, with narrow spectrum or very specific antibiotics because those are safer and uh, have much fewer side effects. So for example, we went from using penicillin to Keflex to later generations of what are called cephalosporins and um, these beta-lactam type of antibiotics. Then as the bacteria became more and more resistant, we had to go to carbapenems and uh, when somebody has one of these ESBL bacteria. So one of the other terms you're going to see now is uh, term called CRE, which is a carbapenem-resistant uh, bacteria. And then we have to use a very old and very toxic antibiotic called colistin. And that leads us to why the MCR, um, the MCR1 gene is, is so scary. Very good. And there's another term. Um, what is a plasmid? Okay. A plasmid is just a small uh, piece of DNA that's within a cell, and it's not part of a chromosome. Uh, it can replicate independently and be transferred from one bacteria to another. And the reason that plasmid, these little bits of plasmid uh, DNA are important uh, is because they often carry the genes for antibiotic resistance and transfer them from one bacteria to another, even between different types of bacteria. So hence, we go into the final piece of terminology. What is the MCR1 gene? Okay, this is a gene that was newly discovered last month in China, and it conveys resistance to colistin. This antibiotic I mentioned is a last resort antibiotic. So this means uh, Dr. Liu's team in China found that this this resistance gene makes a totally uh, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And they found this new colistin-resistant gene present throughout food samples in China in 15% of meat samples and 21% of the animals they tested. Um, Then they found the same resistant gene in some of the bacteria, E. coli and Klebsiella bacteria, from hospitalized patients. And since the isolates were already very resistant ESBL bacteria to begin with, they were now resistant to all antibiotics, including uh, including the carbapenems and colistin once they got this new gene. Okay, and, and that really goes into your first article a couple of weeks ago uh, concerning the first Lancet study. Is there anything else in the, in the uh, China study that we learned? Well, there are a couple of things. One is uh, the authors emphasize that colistin is widely used in China's agriculture industry. In fact, uh, 12,000 tons of colistin are used as growth promoters in China each year. While we don't use it here, we don't use that particular antibiotic here in the U.S., it's also widely used in, in Europe and is the fifth most commonly used growth promoter there. The authors uh, believe that this uh, broad use of colistin is what has likely led to this resistance, which then has been transferred to people now. Okay, and then when we get to your second article a week later, and there's a plethora of more Lancet reports and um, concerning uh, the MCR1 findings, and uh, it only gets worse. 
Right. I, I wish I could tell you otherwise. Yeah. Uh, other teams began to look for this MCR1 gene, and uh, a Danish group found it in a patient's blood and traced that to poultry uh, that the uh, patient ha- had eaten. Since Just in the last couple of weeks since then, the gene has been found in multiple countries in Europe and in Southeast Asia, in, uh, not only in China, but in Laos and Thailand and in Africa. Then um, a related study that came out at the same time looked at Dutch travelers and found that 34% of these D- Dutch travelers acquired ESBL bacteria after trips of as little as one, one to six weeks. And nine of these travelers developed colistin-resistant re- uh, ESBL bacteria, including the MCR1 resistance gene. So this tells us that while we haven't detected it before a month or so ago with this first report from China, it's already spread around the world. Okay. Now, as a physician and as a infectious disease specialist, what conclusions did you arrive at when you were researching these articles? Uh, well, first, this is the scariest thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Um, and sort of the cat's out of, out of the bag. There are a couple of things that we can do, however. One is uh, all the experts agree that we need to stop using colistin in agriculture where it's used as a growth promoter. It's okay to use it as in people when we have to, when there's no other choice. You don't want to use it casually because it causes kidney failure or seizures in people. Right. So that's why we don't. Uh, often like to turn to it, but it has got, there has to be global agreement to stop using it in agriculture. Now, one of the other things that came up last week, which was a huge concern as well, is that uh, Congress passed and President Obama signed uh, an act repealing the country of origin labeling for food, and so we won't, um, we won't know whether our food is coming from one of these countries, whether our meat is coming from one of these countries that has uh, these resistant organisms. And this is, to my mind, a huge mistake mm-hmm. and, a bi- and a big problem because uh, people acquire resistance in part by exposure to, uh, to raw, raw meats and poultry and fish. Um, the other thing I learned in researching this is, is how much, uh, which... People may or may not know, but how much uh, politics and and lobbying is driving these important scientific uh, issues like the use of growth, of antibiotics as growth promoters. And we've seen with the lobbying against McDonald's and Subway and uh, some others that it makes a difference if the public takes a stand opposing antibiotic use and encouraging the companies to save save the save the drugs for, for people. The um, One other thing that uh, Dr. Lance Price mentioned, and he's uh, the director of antibiotic resistance at Action Center at GW, is he explained that there needs to be a better integrated surveillance between hospitals and communities and the livestock industries rather than having them each as separate uh, entities that don't talk to each other very much. Okay, so we've gone through all all these Lancet studies, all this technical jargon. In your viewpoint, what does this all mean to the average person? We're going to have uh, very, very limited choices in antibiotics. Uh, pharmaceutical companies are, are not developing many antibiotics be- because it's not profitable. Um, what it says to me is that we need better education of the public on when antibiotics are needed, like that they're not needed for colds, sure. and that we need to... I view antibiotics as actually as a national security issue, and we need to have, I think, drug development uh, be part of uh, more of a government uh, initiative and uh, government-controlled control, companies... Um, and, and products to try to reduce uh, their overuse. One, one other thing I wanted to mention is I've been seeing more patients unexpectedly with ESBL infections 
um, that, that I've learned in working the last few months is that it's critical to tell your physician if you've traveled outside the country and also if you or a family member works in a nursing home or, or a health care facility because both of those put you at risk of having acquired an ESBL and your doctor would not otherwise suspect that or use, use uh, carbapenem antibiotics initially. Well, excellent advice. Well, thank you, Dr. Judy Stone. I look forward to your next article, and uh, please keep up the good work. Okay, well, thank you again so much for, uh, for having me and encourage uh, antibiotic development. Thank Thanks you, Dr. So Judy much. Stone. Bye-bye. I appreciate it. All right. And you can read more of Dr. Stone's articles at Forbes.com backslash sites backslash Judy Stone.